teams are separated by just five yards. They do it first for player safety, but yep. also to encourage more action. They want more returns. You see the percentage return the NFL versus the XFL. Yeah, I, I love it. And I think what it does is it, it further enhances the ability to get the kick return while also adhering to player safety, which everybody wants. So Kelvin McKnight has touched the ball. That means the players can now move. Here's the return by McKnight. Making some moves past the 25, stop short of the 30. Bring them out, bring them out. Let's do this. Seattle Sea Dragons will start with the ball first. They're led by their quarterback, Ben DiNucci. Ben DiNucci, a little cup of coffee with the Dallas Cowboys, and June Jones, the offensive coordinator for Seattle, really likes this young man and his ability to get rid of the football. Start out on the ground. Here's Brendan Knox. You heard them say, run the ball on him. The mics are open. Players are mic'd up. We can hear everything. Yeah, and what you heard there. Let's listen to Coach Ray, real quick right here. That's Greg Williams, defensive coordinator for D.C., telling his unit what the personnel is on offense. One back, no tight ends. Here we go, Mike! Here we go, Mike! They're trying to cap him. Right there to three. There it is. Three was wide open. That's Jacor Pearson upended. Hey, now. There's going to be some hitting here in the XFL tonight. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Listen up now. So he's saying 11 personnel watch the run because now there is a tight end in the game for Seattle on offense. And Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, knows June Jones. If he brings that extra tight end or lineman in, high level of run possibility. Third and one on the ground. And it looks like just does have enough to get that first down. to the ground. This is with Knox over that left side. We were expecting a pass-heavy offense, but they started a lot of runs on the ground. Well, and you're hearing those open mics, and you heard the defender for right, 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 right. one of the 11 Viper, for D.C. Viper, 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 Viper. Or excuse me, BB for Seattle. Single. BB down, down, down. Tell them down, down. Tell them they're in too high, which means you're too high safety. That means you're going to be light in terms of numbers in the box. If you see that and you're June Jones, you want to run the football. So he's just taking what D.C. gives him on defense. Looking to throw here on second and nine. That pass is completed Good kick. Good kick. to Blake Jackson. All right, here we go. Listen up. BB single press. BB single press. BB single press. Let's go trips right, 80, trips left, 80, Z pivot, X levels. Trips left, 80, Z pivot, X levels, on two, ready. That's June Jones, offensive coordinator for Seattle, relaying the plays into Ben DiNucci. So you hear he said single press. So you see the defense for D.C. pressed with a single high safety. So that's going to be man-to-man -man oh. coverage, man-free oh. coverage. Third and four. Here comes the pressure by T.C. Danucci gets it away and completes it to the outside. A first down to Jordan V.C. Nice job by V.C. here just getting to the sticks, getting the line to gain, and a really well-thrown ball to the outside from Ben Danucci. We mentioned how important it is for the quarterback to get the ball out of his hand, help that young offensive line come together as a unit. Opening drive here for Seattle Sea Dragons, first and ten. Hunt, hunt. Danucci, quick throw to the outside, completes it again to Jackson. Jackson, get off me! And he's thrown to the ground inside the 40, a gain of eight. Let's go trips right, trips right. Almost there, 
That's June Jones, offensive coordinator on the left for Seattle. Greg Williams, defensive coordinator for DC on the right. A lot of history between these two coaches. We'll get into that throughout the broadcast. Second and two. Pump fake, incomplete. As Danucci is dicked by Karan Reed. Pads popping out there. First incomplete pass by Danucci on this drive brings up third and two. Spread right, 92, Navy Z turn on two, ready. Spread right, 90. 90 is their pass protection, so the ball's going to come out quick here. Here we go. Set, go. Hunt, hunt. Third and two for Seattle. Danucci has a man open. Got him. Shakur Peterson. Pushed out of bounds, you hear him. That's all day from Danucci. Jacor Pearson on the inside fade. This is a wonderfully thrown ball. You see number three right there, great separation. And he just drops it in the bucket. Jacor Pearson, one of those players that was discovered at one of the XFL offseason showcases, ran a 4-2-40 for Jim Hazlitt. Jim Hazlitt said, hey, I don't think we want you to work out today because we don't want anybody else to notice that you're out there. First and goal from the seven on the ground to Knox. Sheds one defender trying to get to the edge. His tag team pushed out of bounds. Second and goal from the six, Danucci. Running to the left out of the pocket, just flips it. Oh, what a catch. Josh Gordon, a six yard TD catch off the flip by Danucci. Oh yeah, these boys can play. It's a fantastic job here by Ben Danucci. Taking what the defense gives him, buying some time, and at the last second, flicking it to the six foot four, former second round draft point pick of the Cleveland Browns. So we do not kick extra points here in the XFL. We go for one from the two yard line, a two is from the five yard line, three points from the 10 yard line, and how about this? Seattle's going for three. I like it. It may limit your run selection in the, in the, in the play game, but it gives you the most real estate in the passing game. Danucci scanning the field. Oh, he is decked. That was Davin Bellamy. Once again, one of the new rules, the kickoff. Both teams lined up five yards apart. They're not allowed to move until the returner catches the ball. Dominic Eberly will boot things away for Seattle. Jaquez Azard. He feels it. There they go. He's off. Trying to find a seam. Spin move. Mashing buttons, but nothing doing. I kind of like this excitement on the kickoff. Just love the rule that always almost ensures you're going to get one, right? One of the most exciting parts of the game. Starting quarterback for the D.C. defenders, Jordan Tamu. Jordan's played a lot of football, has played in the first iteration, 2.0 of the XFL. He's really good in the USFL, now back in the XFL in 2023. Ready, ready. Tackle. Tama looking to throw on his first pass is incomplete. Was looking for his tight end, Ethan Wolf. Amanda, let's move right, Alaska. 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 Twins left. Alaska. Twins right. Twins right. Twins right. Twins right. Thank you. And there's our first penalty of the game. 88. Second down. Clock is going to be hot. Clock's going to be hot. Right. 
Twins right, 29. Fred Kais, the offensive coordinator. This should be an outside zone to the left. That's Abram Smith. That thing had no chance blown up in the backfield. Mint Thunder. Mint Thunder. Flex right. Flex right. Flex right. Mint Thunder. Flex right. 22 boss. Z Glance. 22 boss. Z Glance. So they're building in two plays in one here. You may have an inside run, but the Z glance, he's given the quarterback the opportunity to throw the slant route. On third down, fake the handoff. What a crab over the middle. Josh Hammond with defenders draped on him with the reception. And as we outlined for you there, you hear Fred Kais, the offensive coordinator, you hear the run play, but the glance tells the quarterback, if you like it on the influence of the run, and you get that slant, go ahead and pull it and throw it. Now you'll see more of this, but you'll also see it with quarterback run. They're going to really try and stress the Seattle defense with an athletic quarterback throughout this game in Jordan Ta'amu. So short of the first down, they bring on the punt unit. Jacor Pearson is the beat man, Daniel Whelan. And we have another penalty flag. Delay game. Delay game. Offense, five yard penalty. Fourth down. He's gonna wind as well. Ready. Here we go, man! Jesus Christ! It's the XFL. We keep it real. <laughs> Live mics, lots of access. Wheeland's punt is fielded at the 24. Makes the first guy miss. A couple juke moves. And Pearson is brought down next week it is week two of the xfl schedule we start on thursday that's right we're going to switch it up for week two 9 p.m eastern st louis is at seattle then on saturday back to the weekend on 7 p.m this is our game dc at las vegas and then next sunday 4 p.m eastern san antonio at orlando on espn and then the nightcap 7 p.m eastern arlington is at houston on espn2 Second possession for Seattle. Scored a touchdown on their first drive. Danucci looking to throw and complete to Gordon. He was thinking about running before he caught it. He sure was. Got to secure the ball. Make a play after. I, I really like how Ben Danucci's getting the ball out of his hand. There is no hesitation. He's decisive. He's really only been pressured twice on the previous drive and then, of course, on the uh, extra point to three point conversion attempt. Alaska's freeze. Hey, good job on that kickoff, mate. Second and ten, Danucci, and that one was almost picked off. Michael Joseph had his hands on it. Yeah, this is one of the first, really the first poor decision that Ben Danucci has made tonight in terms of just throwing the ball up for grabs. Very, very fortunate. That Michael Joseph, number 15, doesn't come up with that turnover and give prime field position to the offense for D.C. On the opening drive, Seattle was a perfect three for three on third downs. It's third and ten coming up. Danucci, quick throw, completes it to Pearson, pushed out of bounds, and he's going to be short of the marker. They're going for it. They're going for it. We need a regular ball. Regular ball. It is regular. It is regular. That's regular. Clear. Clear. It's regular. Clear. Fourth and two. Seattle's going for it. Empty backfield. Danucci lofts it, and it is complete to Pearson. A gain of 10 on fourth and two as Joseph pushed him out of bounds. <laughs> Number 80, Blake Joseph. Sets up. Sets up what we call an offense a rub, what a defense would call a pick. Picks are illegal, rubs 
are legal. Hey. That was an ideal rub by Blake Jackson, number 80, to set Pearson up to the line to gain. Really well executed play there by June Jones' offense. First in town, they go to the ground with Morgan Ellison out of Southeast Louisiana. On first down, he picks up five. Morgan Ellison's a really interesting prospect. Come in to tell 72 to settle down. He's really only played four games in college football at Southeast left. Louisiana. Y bunch left, 61, Y mesh, Army X turn. Second and five. Look at that protection for Danucci. Slings it over the middle. That is complete to Jordan VC. That's a gain of 13. Danucci, he looks really comfortable in the pocket. He is comfortable seeing the field well, and quite honestly, they're protecting him well. Yeah, I got you. I, I, I planted one side, I went to the yeah. left. And then he back right, one, two, ready. Right. Oh, TJ, bubble. Next time, Set, go! Hot! Hot! That's Ellison again. He gets to the right side of the edge. A collision after he picks up the first down. He is loving it. Kentrell Price lay with the wood. Again, Morgan Ellison, not an overly experienced back. He's 6'1", 230 pounds. He is a load once he gains momentum. And when we talk about keeping dreams alive, guys loving to get this opportunity, they just want to feel somebody. They want to hit out here tonight. No doubt. Haven't, go. haven't hit anybody else for five weeks. Hot. Hot. First and ten, they go back to Ellison. But a good stop up front. Francis Bernard with the tackle. Let's go down. Let's go. Listen to me. Down. Down. Cheat the back strong. Safety single. Down. One. Set. Go. Hot. Hot. Danucci looking right the whole way. Throws and completes to Juwan Green. A short gain on first down. Bob. Bob will see if he reset. Trips left, trips left, flips 50 Lanai. Flips 50 Lanai, on two, ready. <laughs> June Jones, a little Hawaii flavor there. Lanai. <laughs> Again, go. flip press cover one. See the press coverage on defense. Tenth play of the drive. Incomplete. Looking to set something up for TJ Hammonds. Field goal. Field goal. Field goal. Field goal. Field goal. So they make calls even on special teams? Sure, absolutely. No doubt. Hey, watch the ball, no offside. Watch the ball. Watch the ball. Dominic Eberly is setting up for a 36 yard field goal attempt. Kick is clean. Snap is clean, and the kick is up and good. Welcome back to Washington, D.C. Seattle Sea Dragons on top, 9 to nothing over the defenders. John Schriff and Tom Luganville, Harry Douglas, Stormy Bonantoni on the call for you. Beautiful night for some football. Dominic Eberly kicks thing away. They cannot move until Jaquez is our catches. There they go. Trying to make somebody miss. Change in direction and eventually brought down at the 26. All right, so you see the there's three hash marks under Seattle, the green ones. That's for timeouts. Underneath that, there's a red chip. That represents a challenge. Both teams can challenge any play, whether it's reviewable or not. The only catch is you have to have a timeout remaining in order to challenge the play. But the beauty of the challenge it can come at any time. It doesn't have to be a challenge of a call. If a coach thinks that there was a penalty on a play that they can help them, they can challenge that, but they have to be very specific. Ready, ready. 
Second drive for the defenders. Jordan Tamu looking over the middle. Oh, what a hit. Lucky Jackson had it, and then he didn't. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Jordan let's go, let's go. Evans with the hit stick. That's right. Jordan That's Evans, a linebacker that had the ball coming out with a second half. Jim Hazlitt actually coached in the National Football League. Really excited to have him back on that side of the football. Wait, they're going to call that a catch. A gain of four. Whoa. Chris Blair let's go, let's with the completion go. there, a first down for D.C. I thought that ball came out after the hit. Laser, 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 laser. 23, hammer. 23, laser. hammer. I like how D.C. is changing the tempo here. They got to get something going on offense. Tama looked right, decides to take off with his feet, trying to find a lane, and will slide down at the 45, again, a gain of four. So they marked him down at the 44, hey, gain of three. I go left. 72 rocket, all squirrels. Rocket, rocket. 72 all squirrels. Tight, tight, tight. Filling every time zone. Start of the second quarter here. DC starting to use some tempo on offense here on their second drive. Tiamu directing traffic, decides to take off with his legs and will slide down. A gain of four. Really smart decision there by Jordan Ta'amu, and that's what makes him dangerous. Back to that point. Stay in Miami. Stay who? 47. Stay You got it. His ability to extend plays, avoid negative plays, it's what makes him really talented. Third and three for D.C. Inside handoff goes to Abram Smith, and Smith does have enough for the first down. Picks up four on third and three. Abram Smith is a guy with a really interesting story. He played at Baylor, was a linebacker for a year. Yep. He's a guy who told me, I love delivering the blow as the running back. Rushed for 1,600 yards his last year at Baylor. Run ready. Tackle. They go back to Smith on the ground. Tries to squeeze out an extra yard, picks up one. Smith went undrafted coming out of Baylor. Was in the Saints camp, but was cut the last preseason game. He said he went to a bunch of workouts after that, and then the XFL called. He said he is so grateful for this opportunity to show everybody what he can do. Ready, ready, tackle. Smith gets another opportunity here, tripped up. Chop down a gain of two. Let's check in with Stormy. Well, and guys, for Smith, when it comes to being undrafted, then he became the top overall selection in the entire XFL draft. And Reggie Barlow came out and said, he is what we thought he was. Dropped one of those on us. And Smith knows there are expectations that come with being the top pick in this league. But he just wants to continue proving the doubters wrong. He said he's done it his whole career and wants to keep that rolling on in this league. And Stormy, good stuff, because that's what the XFL is all about. Keeping your dream alive, proving to people that you have what it takes. Tamu, strong throw over the middle. That is complete. Josh Malone reels it in. A pickup of 18. Really good poise. And you see Josh Malone, number 81, on the deep end cut. Creates some separation. A little, little, little shove with the arm at the last minute. A great player out of the University of Tennessee. And Jordan Ta'amu, really good poise, vision of the field, timing. This offense all of a sudden looks like it's got some continuity to it. Ready, ready. Tackle. On the ground, slipping. That was Smith. Stopped for no gain. You know, it's interesting. You listen to Stormy there on that report on on Abram Smith is it's rare to, to take a running back number one you know you're usually looking at a tackle or a quarterback or a, a pass rusher but that's how good they think he is we have a player down that's where they stopped play that's Mike Maietti the center for DC And Luke's, we talked about the importance of offensive line play. Yes. Already you see this DC, their center did get back up to his feet. Hopefully he's going to be healthy. But offensive line is so critical here in the XFL. It's critical, but the quarterbacks can help the offensive line as well. You see Mike Maietti and <laughs> Reggie Barlow calls him Jersey Mike. 
because I can't really pronounce his last name, but I just call him Jersey Mike. Backup centers now practicing, and understand you have limited roster numbers in the XFL, so your backups have to be versatile. Your guard has to be able to play center. Maybe you have a, a guard that now has to move over and play on the outside at tackle. So you have to have versatile players in the offensive line if you have an in-game injury. All right, Jersey Mike, you're all right, Jersey Mike. Yep, there he is, Jersey Mike. <laughs> So as Miami has helped off the field, his backup, Ty Clary, will come in and will take over at the center position for D.C. Hey. Hey, go switch. Go switch. Here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. Damu, swing pass, completes it to his running back, Raquel Armstead, and Armstead has him by first down. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Down there. Really good choice here. You see the motion come across on the jet down sweep. Down there, down there. Jordan Tamu doesn't like what he sees. Checks it right down. Guess what? Check downs get first downs. Rocket, 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 rocket. Ready, 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 set, go. D.C. in the red zone. They start this trip on the ground with Armstead. Well, we apologize for that language. Players are mic'd up, so we do apologize for language that may come out at times. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Texas right. Ray, smash. Ray, Texas right. Ray, smash. Let's go, let's go. Tell you, tempo has really helped great, DC great. on offense. Changing the pace of play has gotten them into a rhythm. Now they've got to close it out with some red zone Set offense. Second and ten. Tom rolling out to his right, scanning. Nobody open. And we'll throw it away. Smart heads up play there by Jordan Tahamu. Don't make a risk. Don't make a risk with the football in the red area. Understand your surroundings. Race, You're down 9 nothing. Come away with points. Race, race, Minnesota. Zach, Zach, Zach. Hey, Jordan. Stop your feet. Right, ready. Set, go. Third and 10. Tamu sets up a screen to his tight end. Ethan Wolf dragging defenders. And just brought down at the one. Elijah Holder was holding on for dear life. A gain of 12. Really, really good play call here from offensive coordinator Fred Kice with the backside tight end screen. 67 Cody Conway, the left tackle, out leading the way. Well executed. Now going to use these big running backs, see if they can punch it in here from the one. Did not get there. No gain on first and goal. That's a long way to go for a, a, a quarterback sneak there. Now, I know it's been revolutionized in the Super Bowl within the last right. week by Philadelphia. Right. 19. 19. 19. 19. All right. Hey, twins. This should be quarterback ready, ready. run. Quarterback Back run. Up. 15th play of the drive to Amu. Gets to the outside. Gets the feet in. Touchdown, D.C. We told you this is going to be one of the best atmospheres in the XFL. Abram Smith, the running back, with a good block to free up his quarterback into the end zone. Looks like they're deciding to go for two here with their extra point attack. No kicks for extra points here in the XFL. They decide to go for two points. That's from the five yard line. Ready, ready. Tackle. Tomo throws it end zone. Got it. Two-point conversion is good. Lucky Jackson with the catch. And now D.C. down by just one. Seattle with a one-point lead. Harry, what you got for us? See defenders quarterback Jordan Tamu. Offensively, y'all finally got something going. What was the key? You know, kind of sustaining the drive, um, just making plays. Don't let, the, don't, let, don't let the game get too big, you know, just kind of 
everyone do their job 100% and everyone go out there and execute. That's the main thing. You guys went a little tempo. What was the reason behind that? I mean, we've always been a tempo team. Um, that's kind of the game we want to play to get the defense tired, get them moving around, um, giving them a chance not to substitute. So we want to play fast for our, for our advantage. Back to you, John. All right, Harry, good stuff. Third possession for Seattle. They've scored on their first two possessions. Yep. What's been working offensively? I think it's the fact that they've taken advantage of D.C. playing man-to-man -man coverage just about every snap. So they know we're going to try and get our best guy on what we think is your maybe weakest defender. We're just going to play pitch and catch. And they've run it when the defense is allowed. That's Brendan Knox with the first carry there of this third drive. New quarterback in for Seattle. Ben DiNucci started the first two drives. This is Steven Montez out of Colorado. Six foot five. 230 pounder and you heard hey listen you heard Jim Haslett say it we're going to play everybody on our roster they've got a short turnaround next week they've got a Thursday night game so they want to see what they've got again no preseason games you're kind of having open tryouts right now for who's going to be your main guy so they're going to play everybody that turnaround to Thursday that's going to be the shortest turnaround for any <laughs> XFL team all season long no doubt second and six Montez his first throw is on the money complete to Blake Jackson so seeing Montez is not First down, first down. Has everything to do with Ben DiNucci, no. his performance? No, I don't think so at all. I don't think it's reflective of that. I think what you're seeing is they know what they've got in Ben DiNucci. Now let's see if they've got another one, okay, and Steven Montez. This offense by Jim Haslett, the run and shoot. What does that mean? The true run and shoot. Correct. All right, then this guy, understand Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator at D.C., and June Jones. They coached against each other in the 90s when the run and shoot really started to infiltrate the NFL. So they're very familiar with each other. Trying to bounce it to the outside is Knox. Breaks an ankle tackle and will step out of bounds. Right, come on, the, the biggest thing with the run and shoot is adjustments are made offensively post snap. Right, Denver Stair. All right, here we go. Weak cat, two roll. Weak cat, two roll. Trips left, right. All right, we hear left, two Denver roll. Stare, lightning. Trips left, Denver Let's go. Stare, lightning. We cat two roll. You're going to see coverage roll one direction in the defensive secondary. So they're going to try and give Seattle a pre snap look and then move to something post snap. Inside handoff, Knox. That one gets stuffed up for no gain. And Greg Williams said that's the key. Ruby in the huddle. Ruby in the huddle. Ruby. The key to defending Ruby. this. Here we go. Dabo plus we can't do roll. Dabo plus we can't do roll. Going essentially with the same call. So they're going to bring off the edge. That's the cat. All right. And then they're going to roll coverage on the back end. But the reason they're doing some of this post snap movement is because so much of the run and shoot offense is based off of coverage alignment and receivers making adjustments. So you want to cloud that picture for the offense. Seattle 0 for 2 their last two third downs. Third and 12. Here comes the pressure. And they got there to Montez. A big hit. The throw is off the mark. It'll force him to punt it away. That's Joshua Allen delivering the blow. You see pressure come off the edge right there to the right side. So you got one defender blocked, one unblocked defender. That's who the quarterback's responsible for. Fortunately, he gets rid of the ball, not completed, but also doesn't take a significant loss. Cameron Nizalek on to punt things away. A deep, booming punt. Hazard will field it at the 10. Trying to find some room, and he stopped before he gets to the 20. We do have a flag down. 21, kicking team just took off at the snap downfield. Yeah, he just, yes, five yards. Legal formation, kicking team number 21 left early. Five yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the run. First down. <laughs> Old habits die hard. <laughs> right? Again, that's one of the tweaks of the XFL so that you promote quality returns and field position. Ready, ready. 16 would be quarterback run to the right. He gives it this time. This is Armstead. And Armstead go, go, go. picks up five on first down. And that's that's their zone read concept. Jordan Tamu has the, the opportunity Yellow, F under. Yellow, F under. to give Yellow, or keep. Yellow. Five -oh, five -oh. Ready, ready. There go. It's 
Swing over the middle was looking for Hammond incomplete into triple coverage. And Tamo, he felt that one getting off the grass. Left, Pony left. Yellow, Sonic, Zeke Cross. Yellow, yellow, Sonic, yellow, Sonic Zeke, Zeke Cross. Cross. Pony left, yellow, Sonic. Hey, you got the Sonic. So Pony five left, five yellow's your protection. Ready, ready, set, go. Here comes the blitz by Seattle. Tom, it is batted at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. That's Nico Lelos with the bat down at the line for Seattle. That's a guy out of Dartmouth College. That's right, an Ivy Leaguer. I never thought I would call it Dartmouth College in a professional game. I'm a Dartmouth <laughs> alum, so you know I'm a oh, shout Oh, yeah, there you oh, go. Yeah. There oh, you yeah. go. No, he's one of the quiet leaders on this defense, and he's one of those guys that's running on 93 octane. He may not have the athletic traits of some of the other guys, but he's going to give you everything he's got on every play. We don't root for teams, but Nico, come on, man. <laughs> you got to bring it. Bunting things away, Daniel Whelan. Returned by Seattle. And tripped up just short of the 40. Tomorrow night on ESPN, there's men's college basketball doubleheader action at 7 p.m. Eastern. Duke hosts Louisville. Then at 9 p.m., top 25 teams square off. Number five, Kansas, takes on number 22, TCU, in a key Big 12 battle. Both games are streaming live on ESPN app. We got so many good sports going on right now. This is a great time of year. We got spring football. That's when it's a great time of year. Let's go. So one drive by Steven Montez, and Ben DiNucci is back in the game at quarterback for Seattle. Deep throw down the middle. Had Blake Jackson just overthrew him. Greg Williams really, really bringing the pressure there. And, and what makes it difficult for the offensive line is a lot of it's simulated pressures. The line guy's up in certain spots. Auto to learn. And then you don't know who's coming and where they're coming from. So you really got to be on your toes in the offensive front. Second and 10. Danucci, oh, dangerous throw. How did he complete that one? Jackson holds it in for 12 yard gain. That went through a bunch of hands. I think Francis Bernard, number 43, a linebacker, goes right there through just. Doesn't locate the football in time. That ball had some heat on it from Ben DiNucci. DiNucci quick throw. Josh Gordon hauls it in. And that is good to move the chains inside the 40, a gain of 11. Look at that. Look at that cushion. Just take what the defense gives you. That's the type of respect that a Josh Gordon has on the perimeter. They don't want anybody just running by him. So guess what you're going to do? You're going to let him catch it and then hope you're a good tackling football team. Empty backfield sidearm throw by Danucci. He'll find Pearson for a gain of five. There's so many weapons at wide receiver for this Seattle team. A guy like Josh Gordon clearly leads the pack athletically is he just that much superior to the defenders he's going to see in the xfl likely his combination of speed size strength the ability to elevate and go just take the ball out of the air is going to be unique in this league Danucci's looking his way double team decides to go to pearson will complete that one and they will move the chains again a first down tackled by bernard See Josh. On the wind, come back and he's off. See Josh Gordon there at six foot three, 225 pounds. In comparison to Jacor Pearson, who just caught that football at five foot eight, 190. And there it is, the two-minute warning is, here in this first half. Warning. We've had two penalties, all right? Haven't had a lot of sloppy play. It means they're well coached and prepared. Swing pass to the outside. Kelvin McKnight will get out of bounds. Now under two minutes, the clock will stop out of bounds. 
It will stop on incomplete passes and out of bounds, a gain of three there on first down. And now we're getting kind of back to your routine college rules, right, that a lot of people may be used to. Danucci right back there to McKnight. McKnight fighting for more yards. Did he get to the marker? Well, he's close. So he's just short, so the clock will continue to tick. Third and one coming up for the Sea Dragons. He's got to know to get out of bounds in that scenario, get that clock stopped. 12 seconds now that have run off the clock. Ball is on the ground. Back on top of it is Danucci. So you heard there just some miscommunication between quarterback and center. A loss of four. That'll bring on Dominic Eberly. Will attempt a 40-yard field goal. Snap is good. Kick is up. And that one is wide left. No good. This hooks this one a little bit. It is a really long surface in the sense that when we were down there, John, it's the grass in the turf is long. This is not a, a, a tight field down here, uh, particularly from a soccer perspective, also played in this stadium, but just a missed opportunity. And you heard Ben DiNucci come over there to June Jones to say, hey, the call was on two. He snapped it on set hut. Again, that goes back to that quarterback offensive line communication, playing and gelling with one another. That's going to take some time. So DC gets the ball, 46 seconds to play in this first half. They've got three timeouts to work with. Lucky Jackson will haul that in. Inbounds, gain of six, and DC will call their first timeout of the half. First charge timeout, DC. Please reset the game clock to 42 seconds. 42, thank you. Timeout, right? All right, next week it is week two of the XFL schedule. Short week for Seattle. They play on Thursday, 9 Eastern. They'll be home against St. Louis on FX. Then on Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, our crew will be in Las Vegas as DC travels to the desert, also on FX. Then on Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern, San Antonio is at Orlando on ESPN. And then the final game of the weekend in week two, 7 p.m. Eastern, Arlington at Houston on ESPN2. Second and four, Tamu pressured and will get rid of it incomplete. That was Trayvon Hester applying the pressure. Smart play, you can't take a sack there. The incompletion stops the clock. You live to play the next down. 36 seconds left and two timeouts. Heady play there by Jordan Tamu. Third and four for D.C. Tamu trying to find the stick, and he won't get there. P.J. Hall chops him down short of the marker just to gain a one. They may be forced to take a timeout here. Yep. Why are you calling timeout? Second charge timeout. D.C. 30 seconds in length. So why are they calling timeout if Tamu's asking? I need to ask it, too. <laughs> If they don't call timeout, now it's fourth down. They don't call timeout. The clock just runs. You put the ball into the hands of Seattle with no time left. Now you're going to give them an extra 30 seconds. So does that timeout make sense then? No. So Kelvin McKnight set to return this kick, backing up, will field it at his 12. Tripped up and brought down at the 20. 17 seconds to play here in this first half. 
Seattle has three timeouts. And that's why Jordan Tahamu was questioning the, the call. If you just let the, the clock run down, now maybe instead of 17 seconds and a shot at two plays, it's four seconds. You're backed up on your own 20. So if you're Seattle, with three timeouts, 17 seconds, do you try to do something here? Uh, potentially. Is the worst start fielding position for either team this first half. Quick throw to Josh Gordon, see if he can make something happen. Stopped at the 25, a gain of six. Yeah. That, heard X smoke there. That's the wide receiver quick screen to the X receiver to the left side. It was Josh Gordon. And they're going to take this one right into the half. Had a lot of success as well. It's offensive coordinator Fred Kais, when, when we asked, he's been with Coach Barlow for so long, we asked him, you know, what, what makes this guy special? He teared up with us. And that's how emotionally attached he is and, and how in sync they are as coaches and why he stayed on his staff just about everywhere he's been. So the players cannot move until the ball is touched by the kick returner. Here we go. Fielded. Brought down at the 26. So D.C. will start with the ball first here in this third quarter. Jordan Tamu started the game coming back out to lead his guys. He said growing up in Hawaii, it was the three F's, faith, family, and football. He's always wanted to be on the big stage, went to Ole Miss, has been in camps, was actually behind Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City during the COVID year. He said, this is my opportunity here we go, here we go. to get back to the NFL. Well, if you're not going to get reps, that's a good guy to sit and watch. Abram Smith talking a little smack as he is brought down. Austin Fowley out of Oregon. Hey, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky. 28. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Back to the ground with Smith. Back to that Tomo story, talking about yep. how he's behind Patrick Mahomes. I asked him, I said, what did you learn sitting behind Patrick Mahomes, being in that quarterback room? He said, just the way every day Mahomes went out as a champion. He was the first one on the field and one of the last guys to leave. He also had a notebook that was so detailed. And he said, I have a notebook here for this XFL season. He said, I want to have a good touchdown to interception ratio, finish first in passing yards, and take care of the football. First three things in his notebook as we have a flag. False start, 88. False start, 88. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's Briley Moore, the tar tight end. Second false start called against D.C. tonight. Well, it just hurts you to come out to start off the third quarter, get behind the chain so far, and it just limits what you can do with your play call, third and 15. Danucci, excuse me, Tamu airing it out. And lucky Jackson can't haul it in. Chris Jones was there in coverage for Seattle. But Jesus Christ. Here we go, all four, four. On five drives tonight for D.C., they have four three and outs. Daniel Whelan set to punt it away for D.C. A good kick. Kelvin McKnight will field it. Decides to return it left, cutting back. Still avoiding defenders and is now brought down. So Seattle with their first possession now here in this second half. We talked about how they started so hot, yeah. then cooled down towards the end of that first half. Let's see what Danucci can do to get going here in this third quarter. They're going to have to hold up up front. Ben Danucci knows he doesn't have the right personnel grouping. Blue is their personnel grouping, which means they needed that tight end on the field. Hot. Hot. 
Best starting field position of the day for Seattle. And there's that tight end. That's why you need him on the field. Charlie Tumapayao with the reception, a gain of 16. Really nice job by Danucci here, recognizing the corner blitz. The back picks it up. So now you just take what the defense gives you over the middle to big Charlie. Tomo Payao. Big target over the middle. First and 10 into DC territory. On the ground, jump cut. Knox to the outside, skips another defender. Brendan Knox picks up three of the 24-year-old out of Marshall. A practice squad experience with Dallas, Kansas City. So many guys on the XFL have been in the fun practice squads in NFL teams, just haven't been able to make the 53-man roster. Well, not just practice squads. There have been guys that have made active rosters for a few years, and then maybe either they age out or they become a salary cap casualty. Um, there are at least seven guys that have made an active roster for more than two years on Seattle's roster alone here tonight. Second and eight, Danucci to one of those guys, Josh Gordon. He has been his dependable receiver tonight. One on one with a big cushion. Let's make it simple. I'm going to run the deep 10 routes, 10 yard stop, play pitch and catch, make it nice and easy. Single coverage to the boundary side. It doesn't get any easier than that for Ben Danucci. And that's the respect that Josh Gordon gets on the perimeter. Nobody wants to get taken advantage of over the top by a six foot three former All Pro that's 225 pounds. Trying to mix it up back to the ground with Knox. Danucci's been effective through the air. 19 of 24, approaching 200 yards through the air so far for Danucci. I, you know, he's made one poor decision. Remember in the first quarter, almost resulted in the interception. Aside from that, everything that DC's done, he kind of just picked the right open spot. A lot of those have been underneath dink and dunk type throws, but hey, just complete them and let your skill guys do the rest. On third and six, swing pass to the outside, making something happen. That's Blake Jackson, and he will get a first down. Ben DiNucci, in his only start in the NFL, on Sunday night football against the Eagles, 21 of 40, 180 yards. One start, but it's for the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night football, huh? How about that? And looking for another opportunity to maybe have more future starts in the National Football League. It's so much about right place, right time, right people around you. Danucci looking at Gordon, overthrows him, and sent it down to Stormy. That Sunday night professional debut for Danucci. To this day, he told me that is the only game that his parents actually didn't get to see. It was during the 2020 COVID season, and they were actually dealing with COVID at the time. So while some other people and friends and family got to be in the stands, they didn't. So he said he is thrilled that not only are his parents, but 50 plus people are here in the stands today supporting him. He's from Pittsburgh. They made the four or so hour drive down here, and he's thrilled to show out for them today. Oh, that is awesome, Stormer. Good stuff. Danucci here on second and 10 quick throw will find Pearson and Danucci is an interesting story too because originally out of high school he committed to play in the Ivy League he yep. was committed to the University of Pennsylvania the coaching staff changed at Pitt two weeks before signing period was brought into Pitt and then his career took off from yeah, there. yep ended up at JMU and really really successful there James Madison and again guy with a lot of talent that can really get rid of the football He's proven to be productive, and in this offense, with June Jones in this version of the run and shoot, he's tailor made. Third and three. Knox lowers the shoulder, still on his feet. Touchdown, Seattle Sea Dragons. What a move by Brendan Knox. 13 yard touchdown run. Nobody brought him down. The 220 pounder Adam Marshall. You see number 28 right there bounce this play to the perimeter and then there's just patience and contact balance. Don't allow the first low tackle to bring you down especially when you're built the way Brendan Knox is and really nice balance going for three here for Seattle but nice balance run to pass on that drive for the Sea Dragons. 
So no kicks for extra points. You could go for one, two, or three-point conversion. They're going to decide to go from three for the 10-yard line. Here's Danucci, throws it up. But we do have a flag. Offsides, defense, number 98, five-yard penalty, try. Try still for three, right, Jeff? Still for three. Correct. Yep. And that's a good point to Absolutely. remember. Absolutely. A penalty does not negate what the what the actual extra point will be worth. So now we're going to get five yards closer to the end zone, but it'll still be three points. And a smart, heady play there by Ben DiNucci, knowing he had the penalty. Let's throw it up and take a shot to Josh Gordon in the end zone. Three-point conversion from the five-yard line after the penalty. Danucci with space in front. He's going to take off, and he's got the end zone. Three-point conversion is good. Right. They have been at every single game this weekend, and I'll tell you, the players have noticed it, and that's what they love about the XFL. Buy-in from the top. Return by D.C. They will come back out on offense. Let's send it down to Stormy on the Seattle sideline. Yeah, we've got the Sea Dragons recent touchdown scorer, Mr. Knox here. How much of that TD do you credit to good blocking or just your patience and vision in the moment? A little bit of both, honestly. Just trying to be a tone setter and pick the whole offense up and just do my part. How much are you liking the fact that your coach keeps going for three on these, playing aggressive? I love it. I can't lie. I love it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, Stormy. D.C. with their best starting field position of the night. They will start from the 32-yard line, finding themselves down by 10. But with a one, two, or three-point conversion attempt, you are really never out of a game. Damu looking deep down the field, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and just overran it. Josh Malone was trying to locate the ball, but just couldn't find it. Yeah, Jordan Tamu had what he wanted. Just didn't place the ball across the field. See if he takes a shot here, ready as he delivers the football. Sure does. If he could have led Malone across the field, he would have had an opportunity. Malone, you see right there, having to stop short. P.J. Hall was the guy who applied that pressure. Here's the flag blowing this play dead. False start, zero offense. So that's the wide receiver Josh Hammond called for the false start against DC. 53, 53, 53. Hey, close left, strike left. Close left, strike left. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. There it go. Here comes the blitz by Seattle. Tamu just has to get rid of it. Seattle, they brought everybody. Seattle smelling blood in the water right now, and, and the more D.C. shows that they're going to struggle to protect the quarterback, the more you're going to see Ron Zook, the defensive coordinator for Seattle, keep applying the pressure. Daniel Jones, the first guy in there on Ta'amu. Third and 15, you see Seattle drawing up pressure here again. I think they're going to sit back and make D.C. earn it. Exactly what they do. Tom, a one-on-one -on -one coverage. Looking for Malone again. Good coverage by Chris Jones, the cornerback out of Nebraska. Let's send it down to Harry. I'm here with defensive coordinator Greg Williams. What are some of the things that's going wrong right now in defense? The big thing is we just got to tackle better. You know, we, we, we missed the tackle there down there on the touchdown. We had two guys just bounce off of him. We've got to do a better job of that, and we've dropped three interceptions today. So it's making the plays that we're supposed to make, okay? Continue to play hard, continue to fight hard, and then uh, things, good things will happen then. Thanks, Coach. You bet. All right, Harry. Thank you, Harry. Whelan punts it away. Bouncing in front of Kelvin McKnight, eventually feels it, slips down, ball comes out. It looks like McKnight got back on top of it. So the fifth three and out for DC on six drives. Right now, what's that? So auto, auto to lurk. They've got 10 personnel. DC's Seattle. 
Ah. I'm not hearing anything, so not much we can do about it. I hear you. I hear you, Harry, because obviously that's a complaint just about at every level of football, and with all of the mics out here in the XFL, if that's happening, it should be pretty easy to decipher. We do have a penalty flag. Still on the snap, though. We're on the snap. That's the possession. Still on the snap. So Seattle will get backed up into the loudest part of this stadium as lemons are coming on the field. So what this crew is upset about you see in the back of the end zone right there is they have a tradition here amongst defenders fans. And that is they make a beer cup snake out of their empty beer cups. And the stadium security took it away from him, so now the fans are revolting. It's like it's lemons. So in a revolt, the fans are throwing lemons. Yep. The referees are clearing the players off the field for player safety. The fans say, give us our beer snake back and we'll stop throwing lemons. I, I think it's a small ask. We're in a stalemate here. I really do. But who's going who's gonna to fold? Who's got the power to give the fans their beer snake back? They're having none of it. Harry needs to get over there and get one of those lemons and take a big bite into it. See how fresh it is. There he is. I see him going over. So after the penalty, backs up Seattle, first and 15. Danucci pressured and they got him. Jarrell Owens with the sack. That's exactly what they needed. Back up this offense even more. Get that crowd cranked up behind this Seattle offense. Seattle going the wrong direction. Second and 19 now. Quick pass to the outside. Damian Wills. He only got three. Talk about true home field advantage for D.C. tonight. Tell 24 to keep his hand up on him. Here's 24. Here we go. We got Ruby. Let's go Dabo. Dabo to lurk. Dabo to lurk. So Greg Williams with the play call sheet in front of his face. Is that just because a creature of habit? Because sure we can still hear him even though <laughs> we, we can't see what he's saying. No doubt. Third and 16. Here comes the pressure. Intercepted. Michael Joseph with the pick six and the flips. We'll give you some style points. It's an XFL party here in D.C. and everyone's invited. Let's go. Credit Greg Williams as he just talked with Harry Douglas. Keep playing hard. Keep playing fast. Good things will happen. And that's exactly what just transpired on that drive. They got field position. They got Seattle behind the chains. And then you come up with a big play with your home crowd right behind you. First turnover of turnover of the night. DC turns it into six. Let's see what they're going to do here on the conversion. No, let's go ahead and get the try. Then we go and go to break and get it fixed. In the XFL, we do not kick for extra points. You go for one from the two yard line, two from the five yard line or three from the ten yard line. Looks like DC setting up from the five. So they're going to yep. go for a two point conversion. Eric King in at quarterback for D.C. King keeps it himself, plunging forward. Waiting for the signal. 
Still waiting. Sure. I haven't seen it. Here we go, guys. Oh, oh, oh. Out of one. Really only feels the score. That's Dean Blandino see, in the see, command see center up. looking at it. And then I've got up. The ball's already breaking the plane at that point. He's up all the way, absolutely. Yep. Yep, I've got I've got a good try. I've got a good try. The try is good. We've confirmed the try. Yep, that's up. That's a good look. So you heard Dean, the try is good. I'm here at cornerback Michael Joseph. What was the defensive call? What did you see? Coach called a little cover two. Honestly, the crowd was going crazy before they were born. So I told myself, it's time. You got to make a play. It's Mike Joe. And coach, the quarterback threw a little out route again. Early, I spelled him. But this time, I had to make a play. Have a party in the end zone, man. Did the lemons ignite the defense? It honestly did, man. They, they throwing lemons. Crowd going crazy. We got them backed up. Like I said, when my back against the wall, you know, I, I got to make a play. Man, shit, that's what I did. Thank you. The lemons are the game changer. How about that? McKnight with some moves. Crosses the 25 out of bounds. Stormy, what else do you know about the lemons? Yeah, so I went over there to the stands and just asked, hey, guys, what happened? Why did the beer snake get taken away? They said they have no idea. But if you don't give us beer snake, we're going to continue to give you lemons here. And this is something that's very important to them, so much so that it started another beer snake chant. They want to root on their team, but they want their 20,000 plus uh, you know, ounces of that wonderful juice consumed and in a long snake up the entire stands for them to have that. Well, Stormy, I'll tell you, it has captured the American people because there is a hashtag of free the snake trending on Twitter right now. Is that right? That is right. Free the snake? XFL is alive and well. Danucci pressured will get rid of it. So does that mean Stormy is now the official mediator? since she went in the middle? I did. I got right into the fire, guys. This entire end zone reeks of beer, but I mean, I guess in a good way if you're one of these fans. But I got to tell you, Reggie Barlow, before the season, even said that if he were to get a win out here, he wants to have a beer and add it to the top of the beer snake. So we've got some, we have a serious situation on our hands down here, fellas. The masses have spoken, including the head coach of the D.C. Defenders. Here we go, here we go. Got to give the people what they want. Second and 10, Danucci flushed out again to his right. He gets rid of it as he's decked. And Danucci, he is just running around. Francis Bernard was the guy who decked him. Look at how this crowd and the defensive touchdown has ignited the momentum for D.C. as a football team. The energy in the stadium has changed. Nowhere to go for the, with the football for Ben Danucci. And this place is getting cranked up. This offense for Seattle was so hot. Scored a touchdown on their first drive, a field goal on their second drive. Have not done much since. Ben DiNucci now, three straight incompletions. Third and ten. Pressured again, finds his running back in Ellison, but he's going to be short of the marker. Jamal Brooks there on the stop for D.C. Jamal Brooks laying the hat. Against Morgan Ellison, who's a six foot one, 230 pound back. You know, Lucas, this is something we've seen in other games. No matter how hot a team starts, because these teams haven't played in a while, the game shifts a lot throughout. Big time. Big time, great point, because again, you're starting to get a feel for one another when it's full speed and it's real. Zard, the deep man, fielding that one, crosses the 30, spun around. They got to pick up his leg to get him down as he's finally brought to the grass. Catch episode two of the XFL docuseries, Player 54 Chasing the XFL Dream on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and then available to stream on ESPN+. It's directed by Peter Berg, 
This nine-part docu-series chronicles the creation of the XFL under new ownership and provides an all-access look at all eight teams. Take a look at guys that want to make it. I mean, this is the success stories from the XFL. This is what they're trying to do. No question. And if you, if you shine, if you can take your opportunity, translate it to performance, and find yourself in that spot, then you got to take advantage of it at the next level as well. De'Eric King in at quarterback. His first throw is on the money to Lucky Jackson. And this is something we expected from D.C. as well, seeing both quarterbacks. We did, and I love how they used Derek King on the extra point with the quarterback run. He's so explosive and sudden. Now we'll see what he can do in the passing game as well. King will keep it himself. He is tripped up. And a gain of one will bring up third down. King, who went to Houston, finished his career at Miami. This is another opportunity for a quarterback with a high profile to get some reps. Third and two on the ground. What a speed burst. Raquel Armstead gets the first down again of four. And you know what makes that play happen? The fact that De'Eric King's in the game because he's always a threat to keep it. That's the one advantage at quarterback that D.C. seems to have over the other teams in the league from what I've seen this weekend, and that is a quarterback that's dangerous with their legs, not just one, but two. Fakes the throw, the screen wasn't there, so King will take off with his legs, still on his feet. Penalty flag is out, we'll see what that is, as King is pushed down inside the 15. Jordan Evans was there on the stop, let's see what the flag's about. You got a hold. You got a hold? 63 offense. 63? 63. 63. You don't have a number? There are two fouls in the play, both on the offense. There are two fouls in the play, both on the offense. Holding offense, that penalty's declined. Holding offense, number 63, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. We're going to be on the line when we come back. Congrats, everybody. See the left guard right there. And it's going to happen late because he doesn't know that Derek King's taken off. Oh, I think that is really ticky tack. You know, notice they kept the ball on the field at the end of the play just in case DC wanted to challenge that call. They decide not to use it. That negated a 40 yard run. This is Armstead. Gets a lot of those penalty yards back. Back strike. Gains back strike. 11. Back strike. Back strike. Back, strike. Spread left, spread left, 16 fire. Spread left, 16 fire. Second and five with Seattle starting to crowd the box. De'Eric King calling an audible. Empty backfield, watch out. That ball's up and for grabs. And that hit the ground incomplete. Antonio Brooks, he had a free pass to King, and that affected the pass. And now we do have a player down. Third down. And is Lyndon Stevens for Seattle, who is still down after the play. That's what she said. Hold on. Hold on. You have to call the flag all game, punching the helmet. Right here, she's running through it. You can ask her. But if you tipping on that one for a forward pass, do it a little bit longer for me. So That's when I look back, I didn't need to do it. That's right. right. So I was worried about back. the contact. And the oh, okay, yeah. Because yeah. it looked like it was all on the arm and the throw. Check for me on the wine whenever even, we come back. Even, even 18 on the play clock. Yeah. He's got to come out. Check me, 10 4, check 1, 2, 3. And nobody can hear me. I know, that's what we figured out. Because nobody, Dean can't hear me. So Lyndon Stevens back to his feet. He'll have to come off the field for a play. 
It'll bring up third and five for D.C. The defenders tonight, four for nine on third down conversions. King slinging it in and out of the hands of his receiver, Azar. Derek King wants to go for it here. See Fred Kais, the offensive coordinator. Still a little over a minute left to go with an entire quarter remaining. Last time that they got this Seattle offense backed up inside their own 10. If they can get some field position here, good things happen for D.C. on defense. Fair catch is called for by Kelvin McKnight. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for week two here in the XFL. On Thursday, Seattle with a short week, they go home. They face St. Louis at, on FX at 9 p.m. Eastern. On Saturday at 7, D.C. is at Las Vegas. That's also on FX. The next Sunday, got a doubleheader. At 4 Eastern, San Antonio is at Orlando on ESPN. And in the nightcap at 7 p.m. Eastern, Arlington is at Houston on ESPN2. A minute to play here in this third quarter. Seattle with a two-point lead. Making a jump cut to the left is Knox. Brought down at the 21, a gain of three. <laughs> Tell you one thing. Seattle wants this quarter to end so they can get out of the shadow of that end zone. Is this one of the best home field advantage in the entire XFL? Without question. It's a fantastic venue. Seats about 22,000. So, and they're right on top of you. It's a vertical stadium. It's a vertical setup. Really good for football. Second and seven. Danucci will step up in the pocket. Chase down from behind. And he's going to be dropped. Francis Bernard, the linebacker, making the stop. Got the curls bouncing. Bernard, he's been bouncing around all night. There's just nowhere to go with the football. Very fortunate to hold on to the ball as he gets taken down to the ground once again as this quarter ends. It'll be third and nine for Seattle. Danucci into double coverage, and it's picked off. Michael Joseph, his second interception of the night, still on his feet, brought down inside the 15, and the D.C. defender's defense strikes again. Greg Williams loving it. You're just going to see him just kind of sink and sink, and he baits Ben DiNucci into thinking that he's going to cover the flat route, the target in the flat, and then he sinks late, reads the eyes of the quarterback, and just makes a fantastic play. That was really textbook how you want to play cover to. Obviously well coached, uh, has some experience in baiting the quarterback right there, and now you're going to have a pick six by big number 15, and he put his offense inside the 15-yard line. This is the first start for either team in the opposing team's territory. De'Eric King will stay in at quarterback. Keeps it himself. Dragged down. Just thrown down from behind by Emmanuel Smith. And that'll draw penalty flags. It's a 10 yard penalty? Yes. I lost, I lost the number. I believe it's five, but don't say the number. Okay. Hey, can you help me with another one? Horse collar. First and foul. Horse collar. Defense. Automatic first down. It's Emmanuel Smith, number 43. It's a really good call there. Again, one of those calls that you're hoping to avoid from an injury perspective of guys going back and down awkwardly. That's another thing the XFL has done a really good job of. Yes, they're getting exciting plays, but they're also making sure to make sure that players stay safe. Yeah, and, and it's really been innovative because 
the rules have allowed the game to have some purity that we're all used to, yet at the same time, maintain the explosive plays, get the returns, get field position, and maintain player safety. King up the middle. He's in there. Touchdown, D.C. The defenders now take the lead. No, rarely in professional football are you having to contend with a true running quarterback that on every given snap, defensively you have to account for quarterback run, which means you're playing 11 on 11, not 11 on 10 when the quarterback's a runner. And boy, this makes this D.C. offense dangerous. They're setting up from the five-yard line, which means D.C. is to elect go for two here. They do not kick extra points in the XFL. Jordan Tamu back on the field at quarterback. No, no, I'm telling you though. Coach, play set, play set. No, I'm telling you, right house. <laughs> so Jordan Tamu. Hey, 154. Hey, easy, 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 yellow, yellow, yellow. Some confusion, and here come the penalty flags. Ball start. Offense, number 77, five-yard penalty, try. They can't do it here. Liam Fornadel, right tackle, number 77, a little antsy. They're trying to set up a little razzle-dazzle. They're going to snap it right to the running back, Abram Smith, and try to leak out Jordan Tomo. So the backs him up five yards, but it's still a two-point attempt. Damo scanning to his left, now to his right, running around, and he is dropped. Sharif Miller in there for the sack. Two-point conversion, no good. Tell you what is good, momentum for the guys wearing red and white. It has flipped here in the second half. We do have a late flag. Let's check hey, did, it out. Did you see 96 punch? Excuse my team. Receiving team. So he's disqualified. Okay. I can't. We're hear looking. Did he punch? It's not a blow to the head. Did he punch him in the It in looked the like it was that low towards his, <laughs> yeah, his mid section. <laughs> they were close together and he punched him up towards the gut. I see, you see him react, right? You see him react. After the play, they were on like the 12-yard line. We can't, we can't see it. Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna change your path. Is it a little bit of a shift? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we've got it. It's a punch to the to the to the midsection. If you're Correct. gonna eject, we can eject. Yep. He's off. Okay. What was the number again? 96. 96. 96. So now he's going to be in force 15 for the turn off the PA. Turn off the PA. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct against the receiving team number 96, throwing a punch. He is disqualified. That 15-yard penalty being assessed. Ensuing kickoff. That is Daniel Jones of Seattle. So Jeff, we're just going to move the kicker. Everybody stays where they normally are. All right, moving up to the 48. Correct. Everyone will stay where they are except for the kicker. Move up 15. Hold on, Peter. Who is it on? Which team? I got. It's on. Hold on one second. Timeout. Hold on. It's on the receiving team. You got to back up the other way, Peter. Well, that's what makes the XFL so innovative. We heard every part of that conversation to figure out how to get to that the ejection. The, uh, the from Jeff. Well, and, and the fact that there's a lot of factors, there's a lot of angles, you got to be able to see it and then work through it visually. Go. So McKnight touches it. Players can go after him. And he is brought down after crossing the 30. DC has got all the momentum right now. 
and they can thank their defense. Two interceptions, one pick six. The second one set them up for a touchdown. When we came on air, you know, one of the things we knew that Greg Williams was going to do, the defensive coordinator for D.C., was he was going to give a lot of simulated pressures up front. He was going to have a lot of post-snap movement with the here. defensive secondary to try and confuse this Let's offense, go. and it's really started to play itself out in favor of the defenders. Danucci finds Jackson. Can't get anything going. He stopped for no gain. Early on when Seattle was playing really well, they were playing with rhythm, they were moving the ball. A lot more man-to-man -man defense, clear reads for the quarterback. Since then, they've made a shift to a lot more post-snap zone looks that haven't been as clear of a read for Ben DiNucci. Empty backfield, sidearm throw, sails his receiver, VC. So obviously you're going to get your X on a slant route. Now Hawaii is a name for a pass concept that the other three receivers will be doing, maybe with some backfield action here. Third and ten for the Sea Dragons. Yes. Here's Jackson, but he cannot stretch far enough to get to that first down. He's going to be a couple yards short. been tough for Seattle offensively because they can't get ahead of the chains on first and second down. So they're always in third and eight, third and nine, third and ten. Got to start winning on first and second down if you're Seattle. So Cameron Nizelak will be on to punt for Seattle. A booming punt. If that one goes in the end zone, it will come out to the 35-yard line. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Dean. This is De'Eric King. He has become a threat, picking up five yards here on first down for D.C. Yes, the Seattle defense is pretty happy to see number three going off the sideline. So as King goes off, Jordan Ta Tamu in shotgun formation for the defenders. Keeps it, throws it over the hands of the defenders. And that'll be a first down. Two flat, two flat. <laughs> Completes that to Josh Hammond. Ethan, tell him. Hey, over this guy, this guy. 22. Over this guy, 22. Go right, go right, go right. This is what we saw from D.C. in their second drive, using more tempo yes. to keep the defense off balance. And a lot more successful doing it. To the ground they go, Abram Smith. Smith lowers the boom. That's the former linebacker from Baylor. He said, I want to be the guy delivering the blow. And right now they got to get lined up fast. They've got Seattle on their heels. Let's line up, run a play. I think you're in two down territory here. It's only second down. You, you got to use this tempo. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready, set, go. Second and three, Smith somehow finds his way out of the pile, picks up five yards and another first down. Emmanuel Smith eventually brought him down. And look at him just churning the legs right here. Real patient, kind of steady, and then finds a little hole to bounce to the outside. But look at his feet continuing to move. And see, this is where the fast-paced clock rules of the XFL really benefit the team that is capable of running the football. Rocket, 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 rocket. The clock's not going to stop for anything. Ready, ready, set, go. They're going to use Smith here in this fourth quarter. Gets around the corner, dragged down by Jordan Evans. Abram Smith said that one year where he was a linebacker at Baylor, right, here we go. it said he's now like a cheat code. 12, 12, 12. 12, 12, 12, 12. Same thing, same thing, change. Turn change. Under center. Pro left, 46. Pro left, 46. Stay in the huddle. Pro left, 46. Pro left, 46. Hold on, ready? Pro left, 46. Let's go, let's go. 
This is likely going to end up being their counter to the right. So they're going to run the football. 46, that's an even number. There it is. That's the backup running back, Armstead. You suck ass. You suck. You didn't start bullshit. And Armstead gets no gain, brings up third and short. Back strike, back strike. Now, because so many players are mic'd up, we're not letting everything get out to the public, <laughs> but we're hearing some things. Let's just say they're talking trash to each other right well, now. Well, let's just say we're hearing football. <laughs> ready. Tackle. Hey, 29, 29, 29, 29, 30. Right. Ready, ready, tackle. Third and three. DC's been effective on the ground. This is Armstead, and he finds enough for another first down. You hear coaches say, or you hear people say, we got to be able to run the football when we have to. Uh-uh. you got to be able to run the football when you want to. Right now, D.C. is lining up and saying, we want to run the football, and we're going to run it there, and we're going to run it there, and there's not too much Seattle can do about it. What shifted in this game? Because for most of this game, Seattle had control. Tempo and Derek King changing the offense and how Seattle defended them. Armstead with a running start. Another good gain on first down. Great gain on first down. And then obviously we have to note the obvious. A pick six on defense and then an interception that set up the offense for, for D.C. on the 15-yard line going in. But from an offensive perspective, Derek King's made a difference. Let's not forget about the Lemons. Well, D.C. fans, they've played a part in this as well. There's no doubt. I mean, you take away a beer snake and you never know what's going to happen. Second and four. Smith, it takes two guys to bring him down. It's a loss of three. That was Bryce Thompson, Emmanuel Smith with the double team. Bunch left, Yellow Cleveland. Yellow Cleveland. Here we go. Bunch left, Yellow Cleveland. I want ready. Let's go, let's go. It's another effective drive, just eating up clock for D.C. right now. Yep. Ready, ready. Back up. Third and seven. Tamu intercepted. That's Thompson with the pick for Seattle. And Thompson said, we're going to go to your fans. You've been throwing lemons at us. Take a look at this. Well, be careful what you wish for. Here it comes. I've got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm really surprised they chose to throw the football right there. The way you run in it, you could choose to have four down territory, all right, or you kick a field goal and get some points on the board with seven minutes left. I'm surprised Thompson went into enemy territory. All it takes. This is Pearson. Picks up three on first down. You feel like first down these last few drives has been a critical down for Seattle. It has, and, it, and they haven't they, they haven't helped themselves because they, they just keep getting behind the chain. So it limits their play calls, and they get frustrated. Now you start to press a little bit. Goes back to Pearson. And Pearson has enough to move the chains. Here we go. Here we go. Same call, eight, same eight, call. Eight, six, eight, six, eight, six. Jump, 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 jump. So going same call. Doing a nice job right here, just throwing it out into the flat. So that's zone defense. Greg Williams calling for the same. Receiver slipped down, but still able to make the catch. Danucci. Again, with good yardage on first Hot down to Kelvin Oscar. McKnight. Hot whistle, Oscar. Hot whistle, Oscar. Hot whistle, Oscar. 881 drop. Levels H choice. 
Coach June Jones, you see there on the right, when he says H choice, he's going to give that H a choice of a two-way go based off of the coverage. Empty backfield on second and five. It is tipped incomplete. Looked like Santos Ramirez was the guy to get his hand on the ball. Get it out, Ben. <laughs> you see Ben talking to himself. Get it out, Ben. Ben, get your hands up. Repeat it again, get your hands up. Double move alert. Socks. Double move alert. How did he know that? Well, he, he knows that there's been a lot of short stuff that's been thrown. So you get the double move and all of a sudden don't give one up over the top. Third and five over the middle in traffic. That is complete. Kelvin McKnight. A grab right at the first down marker. That's enough for a first down. It's a really good spot. That's exactly where that ball ended up and where it was caught. Trip left off. 861, 861, 861. Clock continues to tick under five minutes to play here in this fourth quarter. Let go. Hush, hush. Danucci, he gets it out. A little too hot over through his receiver, Juwan Green. Clock, clock. Let's go, what, you're, what you're starting to see here is when Seattle gets into no backs, an empty set, meaning there's no running back in the backfield next to the quarterback. That's a trigger to D.C. that they're going to pressure them. They're going to bring one more, one more than Seattle can block. That time they just br brought the kitchen sink, forced Ben DiNucci to have to get the ball out of his hand quickly. You'll notice even on incompletions, the clock will continue to move until we're inside the final two minutes. Second and ten. DiNucci. And Jackson is just hammered. Anthony Hines, a huge tackle after a gain of five. Three timeouts left clocks rolling possible four down territory here don't have to necessarily get this all back Crowd here is coming alive big third and five coming up swing pass to the outside Pearson still trying to make something happen and he can't get there a loss of three. Decision time. What do you do for Seattle? Right now, number one, if you're piercing, you don't ever go back to the inside. That's where all the bad guys are. The offense is staying on the field. Clock's winding down. Three timeouts left for Seattle. If they're going to go, they have to make a decision and go now. They've wasted way too much time here. Play clock is winding down. Danucci gets the snap off. Out route is jumped by the defender, incomplete. That's to Juan Neal reading the eyes of the quarterback. It's just a speed cut out route, a timing route to the single side of the field. Plenty of cushion, but then look at Neal's squat on it. He knows what's coming. He knows that that Seattle receiver is going to run a route to get to the line to gain, and he's ready for it. Great discipline with his feet and his eyes. Nice play by Neal. Everyone thought Seattle would have the best offense in the XFL. Now you got to give respect to the D.C. defense because they've stepped up big time after time tonight. No question. And it, it didn't start out very clean, and, and they kind of trying to struggle to find their way. But once they did, well, they've kind of taken over this game. De'Eric King at quarterback will hand it off to Smith. First charge timeout. Seattle. Remember, you're going to have game clock to two minutes, 29 seconds. The two, the two minute warning will stop the clock as well. So three timeouts left, one no, being spent here. No, 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 no. All right, Stormy, you are our betting expert. 
Tell us, winding down, four-point gay, what should we be looking at? What well, should we be looking at? Uh, well, under betters, I got to tell you, we're very frustrated by that Ben DiNucci interception to set up D.C. to take the go-ahead score because now we are clear and over. But you mentioned Seattle getting a lot of love for what they thought was going to be a very efficient defense. That's why they were a two-and-a-half-point favorite in this game. That alongside the coaching aspect, them not being able to get in the end zone there has favorites betters sweating for sure. They'd be the first money line favorite not to win this weekend fellas. Oh I love that insight second and five King keeps it just gets back to the line of scrimmage no game. Second charge timeout. Seattle 30 seconds in length. Please reset the game clock. Two minutes 24 seconds. Thank you. So Seattle now with just one timeout remaining. Now that's also critical because you see the mark, the chip underneath that timeout, that red chip. Yep. That is a challenge. You can challenge any play, whether it's reviewable or not. The key is you have to have a timeout remaining in order to use it. But for Seattle, it's all about saving time here. No doubt. And this is a huge third down for them right now. Again, the two minute warning will come essentially serve as an extra timeout. Derek King at quarterback on third and five. Across the formation. This is Azard. And he is thrown down to the grass. He'll be two yards short. Hey, two star yet, nigga. So Seattle decides to take their third and final timeout before the two minute warning. Now because of that they will lose their challenge here in regulation. Yep. Tito's 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 play bump play Tito's Tito's bump bump. Do you like that timeout or should they have just waited for the two minute warning. I think they should have waited for the two minute warning because not only have you now expelled all of your timeouts you've expelled to your point the challenge in case you were to need it if some play gets made that's questionable and again you can make a challenge without a penalty be it doesn't have to be a response to a penalty if a coach sees something from the sideline and says wait a minute that was defensive holding you didn't call that we want to challenge that as long as they're very descriptive but now you've lost the timeout and the challenge first charge timeout. D.C. 30 seconds in length. So D.C. elects to call a timeout on fourth and two. They're trying to win it here. Hey guys, we got to get this now. We got to get this right. Two yards. So this is actually one of the most interesting rules in the XFL. And I the XFL it. is working in conjunction with the NFL. Mm -hmm. You can challenge any play, whether it's go, been called man. on the Get field this. or not. You just have to have a timeout remaining. ADO, man. ADO. I, I can't. And again, as a reminder, a lot of people think, okay, well, your challenge is to a penalty that was that was called or a spot or something like that. But it doesn't have to be that. It could be something that anybody noticed from the booth or on the field that you want to challenge. DC, their first fourth down attempt of the night. King's going to keep it himself. And he's not going to get it. Trey Walker stepping up big for Seattle. Jordan Evans, Trey Walker do a really good job of sealing the backside. You know when you've got quarterback run, if he decides to reverse field, which Derek King attempted to do right there, nice gap discipline and integrity from that front seven for Seattle, giving this offense a chance now with two minutes and 11 seconds to go. Even though they don't have a timeout, they're going to get a clock stoppage with the two-minute warning. This may end up playing in, DC, in uh, Seattle's favor. And under two minutes, we go back to regular rules where out of bounds and incompletion stop right. the clock as well. For Seattle, this is their best starting field position of the night. Danucci steps up, sidearm, out of bounds, incomplete. We're looking at VC.
Two minutes to play in regulation. Danucci throwing on the run across his body. Throws a strike to Josh Gordon. What a dime by Danucci. This is an absolute frozen rope rolling to your left as a right-handed quarterback and just rips this. Whoa. Really good resourcefulness there by Ben DiNucci and Josh Gordon, former All-Pro, second-round draft choice of the Cleveland Browns, taking care of business. A 22-yard pickup. DiNucci now goes to the other side. This is to Pearson. And he said inbound, so the clock will continue to run. Good tackle by Neal. No timeouts for Seattle. 1.22 to play. Seattle has over more than 100 yards of offense than D.C., yet they find themselves down by four. Danucci slipped, stays on his feet, pressured, and gets rid of it. Man, he took a shot at the end of that one. Ben Danucci does a really nice job of keeping that play alive and most importantly avoiding a negative play. He loses his footing there in the pocket. He's got to secure the football, gets both hands back on the ball and takes a shot getting the ball out of his hands. Lived to play another down, but it's third and nine. Danucci, 33 for 49 today. Scrambling, throws it away. They're going to say incomplete. That will stop the clock at 57 seconds. Under one, under one. Well, Luke's, this is it. Fourth and nine. Okay, hot, hot, hot. Two Indiana. So Greg Williams, I think I heard the last end of that call. He said two lurk. Two lurk was the cover they were in. Cover two with sinking corners was the it was the coverage they were in when they intercepted the ball. Game time right here, fourth and nine. Danucci trying to find somebody open. Downfield, and he's got it. Gordon. Josh Gordon came back to his quarterback to bail him out. A gain of 18, and the drive continues. Greg Williams not happy with his defense or his coaching staff on the sideline there. We'll spike it, kill the clock at 42 seconds. Really good initial quickness there. Keeps his eyes downfield. There is no foul. Not too many men on the field. First down. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. We had the spike. We had the spike, and then we had the ball. Yeah. I've been cooking you every fucking play. That's what I got. Five. First and ten. Inbounds or out of bounds? No foul. No Inbounds or out of bounds? Do I wind the clock? There's no foul for 12 on the field. So they pick up the penalty flag. Second down. Josh Gordon on this drive, two catches for 40 yards. After the spike, it'll be second and 10 coming up here. Danucci steps up. He's got room to run in front of him. Finds the out of bounds as he takes a shot. He's looking for a flag. That was Jamal Brooks lowering his shoulder. Yeah, but Ben DiNucci did not give himself up. All right, here we go. See if he's still in bounds when he gets hit. Hey guys, let's sure is. They have to get to the five-yard line. Play clock's at four, third and two. DiNucci looking left, complete. Pearson just stopped short. Once they place the ball, that's when the clock will restart. Seattle out of timeouts, going to clock it here.
26 seconds to go in regulation. Seattle on the doorstep. Let's take care of the ball. Let's go trips left. Is this a situation where Seattle can still run the ball? Uh, I would say no because of the style of offense, and they're going to call Ohio. Should be double out routes. Danucci, Ooh. he's going to run it, and he stopped short. Mm. Seattle out of timeouts. They have got to hurry up. They turn the ball over. Oh, it's. DC thinks they have it. Who's got it on the bottom of that pile? Well, the head referee had already signaled first down for DC. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. He's got it. Early on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, DC. That's Jamal Brooks coming away with the football for D.C. And that's ball game right there. And Luke's with no timeouts. Seattle cannot challenge that play. They cannot challenge the play. Let's see here. Oh, ball's out. Good call by the officiating crew here on the final play of the game offensively for Seattle. And it looks like DC is going to prevail behind what has been an outstanding effort by Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator's defense here tonight. Victory formation for the defenders. And that'll do it. What a way to finish opening weekend in the XFL. Those fans in that end zone are losing it right now. You can take away their beer, Snake. You can't take away their enthusiasm. <laughs> Tell me DC does not get behind their XFL team.